West Weald, a patchwork quilt of farmsteads, hedgerows, ancient woodlands and fields, steeped in human and natural history. There are several partners to the Westweald Landscape Project, which covers an area of almost 150 square miles of northwest Sussex and part of Surrey. Now, the Westweald Landscape is a really important area. It's got lots of rare species, some important areas of habitat, particularly ancient woodland. It's a living historic landscape as well, which we're looking to conserve the good bits, but actually make it better to improve all the bits around the important old blocks of ancient woodland. Petra Billings, the Westwheel project officer, is on her way to meet some landowners whom she hopes will make a significant contribution to the project. I'm on my way to see a landowner who's got a small orchard which he's keen to extend and uh, we're, we're keen to support that, orchards being um, prime habitat for conservation. And uh, interesting too because the landowner's keen to plant Sussex varieties of apples and we're keen to promote um, the localness of food, the sustainability. And yourself. Thanks for coming along. So if you show me where your 105 goes to and then... To the um, corner, so actually the whole way to this bit. Traditional orchards have been recognised nationally as a priority habitat for conservation since 2007. They're important for a host of birds such as woodpeckers, tits and nuthatches, which may make their clay-lined nests in the holes of old trees. Many kinds of insects live in the bark and dead wood, and the bark itself is also host to a huge range of lichens which may often include many rare and colourful species. I think the hawthorn would be better than blackthorn, really. For your sheep? Well, in terms of well, in the long... The landowner's two Southdown sheep, Blossom and Petal, are going to be an essential tool in maintaining the sward underneath the new orchard. By grazing out the coarser grasses, they enable the flowers and the fungi to flourish. Uh, we're working very hard in the West Weald. We've spent a long time getting together survey information to know where some of the important species are, where, where some of the best bits of habitat are. The real challenge now is to move forward to actually make some practical difference to this area, to make it even better by working with landowners to create new areas of habitat, new connections between woodlands, for example, for some of our rare bat species. Barberstale bats in particular have been extensively studied in the West Weald area enabling the production of complex maps showing both where their roosts are and the flight lines or paths that they take on the way to their feeding areas. This time Petra has gone to meet a landowner to talk about the possibility of planting a new hedge on his farm. Hedges are essential to Barberstale bats. They need them along their flight paths to reach the Aran Valley where they feed. If they're forced to cross open ground without any hedges or trees, they're more vulnerable to predators and they fly much later, missing out on some valuable feeding time. Another very rare species, the Beckstein's bat, is also found in good numbers in the West Weald. This one is just waking up from his daytime slumbers and he'll soon be off to feed. Beckstein's bats need almost continuous cover of ancient woodland in which to feed, so it's vital for the project team to advise woodland owners about sensitive management to ensure that the bat populations are not compromised. It turns out to be a much nicer day for the actual planting of the hedge. Sandra has gathered together a few volunteers for what turns out to be a full day of hard graft. 
but it's important to be sure that the right species of trees and shrubs are chosen for the hedge. Yeah, we've got a really good mix. We've got um, predominantly hawthorn, um, some field maple, dogwood, spindle and hazel. So um, should hopefully give a nice sort of big hedgerow in a few years time, uh, encourage those bats um, and small mammals. Grazing and horse ownership are important factors in the West Weald, so Petra and the Catchment Sensitive Farming Initiative have organised a meeting, inviting horse owners in the area to come and find out more about how to manage their land better for the horses and better for wildlife too. This workshop is specifically for horse owners, stables, studs, liveries, um, and it's a really good opportunity to be able to reach a quite an important sector in the project really because good grassland management is actually good for wildlife. Pretty soon people start to roll up. Although the project is about preserving and improving certain habitats in the West Weald, there are some species that provide a focus for this. Well, there's a number of species. One of them is the wood white butterfly. There's an important population of that around Chiddingfold Forest on the Sussex uh, Surrey border. And we've got local naturalists to find out where they are in what numbers from year to year. At the moment, there's a real opportunity, I think, because the numbers are improving. They've had a few good years after many poor years to actually realise some, some benefits for this population by working with woodland owners, for example, to improve their management of rides, make them wider, let more light in, allow the, the flower nectar sources for these butterflies to feed on. Meanwhile, Petra has gone to join some other volunteers on one of the regular surveys for dormice in the area. So you have to check each time there's a nest, just to make sure there's nobody in it. There are over 80 nest boxes to get through. Many of them have nests and some even have small mammals in them. Lots of wood mice and this common shrew. But whatever's found has to be scrupulously recorded. It's still got the nest in there, so probably better get it up and see if there's anyone home. They're in luck. A sleepy dormouse just entering his winter hibernation. Dormice are a protected species and it's essential to know where the populations are so that the habitat can be managed to prevent different colonies becoming isolated from each other. Forty-one, so less twenty-three, so that's eighteen, isn't it? See what sex it is. Oh, little boy. Right. Put your tail back. Which way up was it? That's it. Yeah. So lovely, aren't they? Tuck you back in bed. All right. It's really important that the Westworld Landscape Project continues. We've got to a, an excellent point of knowing what we know about rare wildlife, habitats in the area. We've got really good relationships developed with many farmers and landowners in the area. We've now actually got to make the practical difference to their land across the whole landscape to get a healthy natural environment working in this area for the benefit of many of the species such as the farmland birds, woodland wildlife, dormice, bats, butterflies. <laughs>